In all the science we pursue, we're used to seeing progress. Our first attempts to grasp the laws of nature are often incomplete and fragmentary. Scientists are good at revising their ideas. They don't expect to be right first time. Our first attempts often capture just a part of the truth, or we see the whole truth merely through a glass somewhat darkly. There are some who have always thought that progress in science, and many other systems of thought as well, is like a never-ending sequence of revolutions that overthrow the old and replace it by the new. Condemning the old really to the dustbin of ideas. And there's no convergence upon something that we might call the greater truth or the whole truth. But scientific progress doesn't look like a series of revolutions when you look at it from the inside. And new theories don't totally replace the old ones. New theories extend and subsume the old ones. The old theories are usually recovered in some limited situation where things move slowly or where gravity is weak or where things are big or where energies are low. Newton's 300 year old theory of mechanics and gravity has indeed been superseded by Einstein's theory of general relativity. And one day, no doubt, Einstein's theory will itself be superseded, perhaps by M theory, its inventors would like to think, or some unknown successor to that in the future. But nonetheless, in a thousand years' time, school children will still be studying Newton's equations and Newton's laws in pretty much the same way that they do at school today. And engineers will still rely upon them to build bridges and aeroplanes and other structures. You see, Newton's theories will always end up being the limiting situation of slow motion and weak gravitational fields of whatever the ultimate theory turns out to be. The old turns out to be part of the deeper truth that the new uncovers. So in our religious conceptions of the universe, we necessarily also use approximations and analogies and simple pictures to try and envision things which are beyond our complete grasp. Those pictures are not the whole truth, but that doesn't stop them being a part of the whole truth, a shadow that's cast in some limiting situation of some simplicity. Our scientific picture of the universe is revealed time and time again, how blinkered and conservative our outlook and approach to the physical world has often been how self-serving perhaps our interim picture of the universe has emerged and turned out to be, how mundane our expectations, how parochial our attempts to find or deny the links between scientific and religious approaches to the nature of the universe. I think recently we've seen that tide begin to turn. Sir John Templeton has done much to encourage this impartial dialogue between science and religion in the firm belief that religion and science can supply mutual illumination and appreciation of the wonders of our universe and inspire us to seek out and comprehend the truth in new ways, a truth that's unfailingly unexpected and like the ceiling in St. Mark's, so often not like it first appears. <laughs>